This is Mrs. Zappia with Grade 8, Module 2, Lesson 5, Definition of Rotation and Basic Properties. Our essential question, what two pieces of information are needed to perform a rotation? What is the simplest transformation that would map one of the following figures onto the other? Take a piece of transparency paper and trace your figure. Then, we want to know if a translation would map this figure onto the other. So, is there a vector that would translate this? There is no vector. You'll see that this handle part is not in the right orientation. Well, what about a reflection? Could we flip it over somehow? If we flip it over, then we've got that. This is still in the wrong position. And remember, a simple transformation would only be one transformation. Well, what about a rotation? Could we turn this? Yes, a rotation would work. The simplest transformation that would map one of the following figures onto the other is called a rotation. Let there be a rotation of D degrees around center O. Let P be a point other than O. So here is point P and here is O. Select D so that the degrees is greater than or equal to zero. Then we'll find P prime, and that is the rotation of point P using a transparency. So take a transparency paper and trace your figure I've already prepared mine. Trace your figure and then take it to the side, turn it over, and retrace your other figure so that you have lead on the back of your transparency paper or your tracing paper. Then our degrees is greater than or equal to zero. When your degrees are greater than zero, that means that your rotation is going to go in a counterclockwise to the left direction. Add that to your notes. Counterclockwise. When your degree of measure is positive, greater than zero, you will be rotating your figure to the left. So here, I'm just going to make a notation on my tracing paper to help me to remember to turn it that way then your degrees around the center. So your pencil tip goes on the O dot, and then you're going to rotate your paper in a counterclockwise fashion, a positive number of degrees, such as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And it's not specific about what number you should use. So when you're happy with your turn, go ahead and trace that ray and label it. You may need to darken it once you remove your tracing paper. Remember to label the image P prime. So this is when your degrees are greater than zero, such as any positive number, and you will rotate in a counterclockwise to the left. Next, number two. Let there be a rotation of D degrees around center O. Let P be a point other than O. Select the degrees so that the degrees are less than zero. Find the P prime, which is the rotation of point P using a transparency. When our degrees are less than zero, that's going to be a negative number. When you have a negative number, your rotation is going to go to the right in a clockwise manner. Please add that to your notes. Then take your figure and lay it over the original figure. Put your pencil tip on the point O, that is our center of rotation, and then we're going to rotate it to the clockwise direction. And it's not specific about the number of degrees, so you can just turn it a bit and stop. Darken your ray and your point. Remove your paper, and if you couldn't see it, or if it's not dark enough, darken it. 
label your image P prime. So this is a rotation of a negative degrees. When your degrees are negative, you're going in a clockwise position to the right. Next, which direction did point P rotate when the degrees are greater than zero? When the degrees are greater than zero, we go in a counterclockwise to the left. Which direction did point P rotate when D is less than zero? When D is less than zero, that would be a negative number, and your rotation is going to go in a clockwise fashion to the right. Number five. Let L be a line, so here is L, I'm going to darken these labels, A, B is a ray, A, B is a ray, C, D is a segment, here is C and D, and angle E, F, G, angle E, F, G. Let there be a rotation of D degrees around point O. Find the images of all figures when D is greater than or equal to zero. When D is greater than zero, we will be moving in a counterclockwise fashion. So we'll take our tracing paper, go ahead and draw and label all of your figures. Remember to draw the point of rotation as well. We've got DC, and here we have EFG. Then I'm going to remove my paper and darken the back side of the tracing paper so that when I sketch my images, the lead will show up on my paper. Return your paper to the original position. With your pencil tip on O, this is your center of rotation. Then I'm going to rotate it in a counterclockwise fashion. And it didn't say how many degrees, so I'm just going to turn it until I'm satisfied with it, and then I'm going to stop, and I'm going to sketch my figures. So here is ray A, B, here is line L, segment D, C, and ray E, F, G. Remove your paper, and you probably will need to darken those. So we had ray A, B line L. Now as you're labeling these, remember that they are the images, so include the prime symbol so that you can discriminate between the original figure and the rotated figure. So this was L, this would be L prime. This is segment CD, so we have C prime, D prime. And then over here we have EFG, E prime, F prime, and G prime. So this is our rotation with a positive number, and that's rotated in a counterclockwise to the left. Number six. Let A, B be a segment of length four units. Angle CDE be an angle of 45 degrees. Let there be a rotation of D degrees where D is less than zero, about O. D is less than zero, so that's going to be a negative number. It's going to go in a clockwise to the right. Find the images of the given figures and then answer the questions that follow. 
take a piece of tracing paper and I'm going to reuse this one. As long as you can fit your center of rotation and your images on the tracing paper, you can use a piece again. So we are with D, and that is E, F, or E, C, rather. And over here we have A, B. I'm going to remove my paper, and I'm going to darken the figure on the back so that when I draw my image, it will show up. Return the figure to its original position. Place the pencil tip on O. That is your center of rotation. Then we are going to move it it's a negative number, so we are going to the right in a clockwise fashion. It doesn't tell me how far to go, so I'm just going to move it a bit and then stop and draw my figures. Then this would be D prime and E prime and C prime. And over here I have A prime and B prime. You can darken those if you need to. Then we have a few questions. What is the length of the rotated segment for rotation AB? The length of the segment before it was rotated was 4 units. The length after the rotation is also 4 units. Remember that segment length is preserved, so it is the same. What is the degree of the rotated angle of angle CDE? The original was 45 degrees, so the angle on the rotated figure will also be 45 degrees because angle measure is preserved. Next, what are the basic properties of rotation? The first property is that a point rotates to a point, a ray rotates to a ray, a segment rotates to a segment, a line rotates to a line, and an angle rotates to an angle. Pause the video and copy this down. The second property of rotations. A rotation preserves segment length. And the third, a rotation preserves angle measure. Those are the three basic properties of rotations. Next, let line 1 and line 2 be parallel lines. Let there be a rotation of d degrees, where negative 360 is less than the degrees, which is less than 360 degrees, about O. Is line 1 the image parallel to line 2 the image. So this right here, let's make sure you understand what that is saying. That means that the degrees are between negative 360 and 360. So the degree of turn could be something like negative 240 or negative 100 or negative 20 or 0 or a positive number like 40 160 or 259. All this is saying is that it has to be between these two numbers. So the question is asking, if you take these two parallel lines and you rotate them around O, will they remain parallel? So let's go ahead and take a piece of tracing paper and sketch your set of parallel lines. So we already know that the lengths will be preserved. This question is, after we rotate them around point O, will they remain parallel? What do you think? Let's try it. So here we've rotated them. Are those two lines still parallel? Yes, they are. 
What if I rotated them further? Are they still parallel? Yes. What if I still rotated them? They're still parallel. They remain parallel no matter what degree you rotate them. And even if you rotate them zero degrees and you don't move them, they remain parallel. So the question is, is the image still parallel, the image for line one still parallel to the image of line two? So let's go ahead and do that actual rotation. And you'll remember need to turn this over and copy the lines on the other side so that when you trace them, they will show through. Return that to the original spot. Rotate around point O. Draw your figures. Label them. You may need to darken them. So we have line 1, the image, and line 2, the image. And the question is asking, is this line parallel to this line? And the answer is yes, they are still parallel. They're the same distance all the way. They will not intersect. Question 8. Let L be a line and O be the center of rotation. Let there be a rotation of D degrees, where D is not 180 degrees, about zero, or about the point O. Are the lines L and its image parallel, and how do you know? So our degrees could be something like 90. Our degrees could be 45. Our degrees could be a negative number, like negative 5. All it's saying is that it should not be 180. So let's take a look at that. Trace line L. And draw point O. So let's go ahead and rotate that. First, let's rotate it with a positive number. So it's going to go to the left. So that would be 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees, etc. And it's asking, is the image parallel to the original? Well, no, not so far. Not yet. Not yet. Still no. This is about a 90 degree turn, and it's perpendicular. Keep going, keep going. That's about 170. And that would be about 180. So I don't know if you can see through this very well, but here is the line, and here is the image, and that's parallel. But remember it said not 180 degrees. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to draw my figure here. So I want you to notice when it is 180 degrees turn, it's parallel. And if it's not 180 degrees, it's not parallel. Again, this was our original. And I'm rotating it. Watch where this circle is. And at 180 degrees, it should be over here. So let's go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees. There it is, 180 degrees. Right about there. And you'll see that if it's a 180 degrees turn, it is parallel. We should draw that back here, draw the back of it, back to the original, pencil tip on the center of origin, rotate it, and draw it, label it, so this would be L prime, and the question is, are the lines L and L prime parallel? And the answer is no. How do I know? Uh, if they're intersecting, they cannot be parallel. The lines intersect. They intersect. And if they intersect, they cannot be parallel. All right, for our summary, let's go over what we've covered in this lesson. We already wrote about the properties, so we won't include that again but I'll just go over the properties. The length of a segment is preserved. The length of a, um, 
or the measure of an angle is preserved. Uh, point rotates to a point, etc. The essential question for this lesson was what two pieces of information are needed in order to do a rotation. So remember what they are. The first one is you need a center of rotation. And the center of rotation is where you keep your pencil on your tracing paper. Because if you watch this, watch where I put this on O and how I turn it, where it ends up. If I put my pencil tip on a different spot and turn it, it's a different rotation. So the center of rotation is needed. The other thing that you need to know is when you are rotating, are you going counterclockwise or clockwise? So you need to know direction. Just a reminder, when, okay, these are for a rotation. And then just to refresh your memory, when you are doing a translation, the information you need in order to do a, ro a translation is you need a vector. And what does that vector show you? It shows you direction and distance. We also did a reflection. And when you do a transformation that is a reflection, remember that you need a line of reflection. And you need the line of reflection so that you know if you should be, let's see, you should know are you turning your paper left to right or are you turning it up and down or you might even be turning it on an angle. The other thing that went over in this lesson is about parallel lines. When parallel lines are rotated, their images are also parallel. And that concludes Lesson 5.